Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new around here, I'm Cheryl and this is Table Full of Joy. It is duck football today and we are making a chicken pot pie, but we're making this with biscuits instead of a crust on it. We're gonna bake it in our Dutch oven, but we're gonna get started on our biscuits first. Um, if you ever run into the situation where you don't have buttermilk, all you need is milk and some lemon juice and you can make your own buttermilk at home. So we're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice in this milk and we're gonna let this set for just a few minutes so that it has a chance to start to curdle and we will have fresh buttermilk. The other thing we're gonna do while we're waiting for that to happen is we're gonna get our broth started for our pot pie. I am using, you've seen me use this before, but this is the Better Than Bouillon chicken broth. We get this at Costco. So we've got two cups of water here. We're gonna put in probably two big spoonfuls of our broth concentrate. And then we're gonna get a whisk. And we're just gonna whisk this around. Make sure your water is hot when you put this in so the uh, concentrate has a chance to dilute down and dissolve into the water. We're gonna add this to our pot pie when we're ready to do that. We're gonna get started on our biscuits first. As soon as we get this stirred up, we'll set that aside, let it start to do its thing. Set our broth aside. We're gonna get started on our biscuits. So for our biscuits, we need three cups of flour. We'll get our measuring cup out here. I've said this before, just make sure when you're making biscuits, when you're making anything baked like this, that you're leveling off your measuring cups because you wanna have accurate measurements when you're doing this. A lot of baking is a science and you wanna make sure that you're giving everything the correct measurements. So we have our three cups of flour. We'll need, we'll need extra flour when we roll out our biscuits. We need one full stick of butter and a half a stick of butter. And you want this cut into small cubes. Make sure that your butter is nice and cold. Um, take it right out of the refrigerator. Don't let it sit. Because what makes these biscuits super flaky is when your butter is super cold and it goes into the oven to bake. The butter starts to melt, it releases moisture. And when that moisture releases from the butter, that's what creates those flaky layers that you get in biscuits and in pie crust. So you wanna make sure that your butter is nice and cold. Try not to handle it too much. Make sure that you're only handling it a little bit. All right, we're gonna get the rest of this cut up real quick. Then we're gonna put in our, powder, our baking powder and some salt. And that really is essentially all that's in a biscuit is flour, butter, which is your fat, your baking powder, which is your leavening agent, a little bit of salt for flavor, and then your buttermilk is the moisture. That's what gives it the um, tenderness, which is what you want is a real flaky, tender biscuit. You don't want to overwork your biscuit dough either when you're making your biscuits. Make sure that you're not overworking it because when you overwork the biscuit dough, it becomes tough. The flour starts to release the gluten that's in it, and then you end up with a really tough biscuit. So we've almost got this done. We're going to get our baking powder in. Give this one little cut real quick. Okay, we're gonna put in our baking powder. We need two tablespoons of baking powder. Always make sure you check the date on your baking powder too because sometimes if you don't do a whole lot of baking, your baking powder can go bad on you. And if you don't have baking powder that's good, you're not gonna have any leavening in it. So you wanna make sure that you're checking that before you start making your biscuits. We're gonna put in a half a teaspoon of salt. This is a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna do two of these because I cannot find my half teaspoon. I don't know what happened to it. This is a pastry blender. <clears throat> We're gonna use this to get in here and you wanna just really chop all of this butter into your flour, get it nice and mixed in. Your mixture should look like the size of small peas with your flour and your butter. You don't want too big of pieces of butter. You want it to be really mixed in well some people like to do it with their hands. I don't because the heat from your hands is gonna melt the butter. And that's the last thing that you want is for your butter to get warm so that you don't end up with that nice flaky biscuit. Sometimes your butter and stuff will start to stick. Use your knife 
to get it off of your pastry blender, don't use your hand because that's just going to warm up your butter. And like I said, we don't want to have that. We want to make sure that our butter is staying nice and cold and that it's going to incorporate into our flour. I am super excited about our duck football game today. We are playing the Huskies. That is a big Civil War game for us, even bigger than our OSU games. So I thought today it's a nice fall day. My husband loves pot pie. He's been asking for pot pie. And when I came across this recipe this morning, I thought, oh, this is gonna be a good one to do for dinner tonight, but it would also be a good one to share with you guys. So if you're not super comfortable with making pie crust, anybody can make biscuits. And so this gives you another option for a topping on your pot pie instead of a, a pie crust. I love that this bakes in a Dutch oven. Gives me an excuse to use my Dutch oven, which I don't get to use very often. So I'm excited to get to use that today. Okay, this is looking good. We're almost there with the right size. Make sure we have all this butter off of this pastry blender and mixed in. Tell me in the comments what your favorite fall dish is. What do you like when you when it starts to get fall around your area, wherever it is that you live? What is your favorite thing to make in the fall? What's the first thing that pops into your mind for, for a nice warm fall meal? We like pot pie. We also like chili. That's another thing that is real popular in our house, but also a pot roast. I like to do a pot roast, as you've seen in the videos before. We have four little fur dogs and they are meat eaters and so they love it when we do pot roast and they get to have a little bit with us. Okay, this is looking good. We've got our flour and our butter with, with our baking powder. Everything is incorporated. Nice, we've got some nice pieces of butter in here. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab a fork real quick. So our milk, you can see it's thickened a little bit um, from the lemon juice that we put in here to make our buttermilk. So we're gonna add not all of this right away, we're gonna add about half of it. And we're just gonna start to stir really, really careful. Like I said, we don't wanna over mix our um, biscuit batter. We just want to make sure that we're, our dough is staying um, nice and light and fluffy. You want to get your milk mixed in, obviously, but you want to make sure that you're not over mixing this. Sometimes what I have found is when you have the top part of it mixed and the top part is looking good, there might be still some dry flour at the bottom of your bowl. You can take out the stuff that has already incorporated the milk you can take that out, put it on your board, and then add a little bit of milk to the bottom and finish stirring in the rest of it. That way you're not overworking everything. So this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna take part of this out. We have a little bit of dry flour in the bottom down here. So like I said, we're gonna take our, our milk. We're gonna finish adding the milk into the bottom down here to try to get the rest of this mixed in. So that we're just like I said not overworking it we want to make sure that this is nice and fluffy light biscuit dough now you don't want to really need this you don't this is not bread you're not needing bread dough here you're just getting this the rest of the way incorporated with the buttermilk we're gonna get it so that it's just starting to come together and then we are gonna roll it out. Let's get a little more flour on my hands. Our dough is a little sticky. Let's get just a little bit of flour. We are gonna take this and we are gonna flatten this out. Make sure that you're not flattening too much. You don't want this to be too thin because we wanna have nice fluffy biscuits. We don't want our biscuits to be super thin. That's looking good to me. All right, so I have a winch on my hands, but it's gonna be fine. All right, so I have our biscuit cutter right here. We're gonna cut our biscuits. When you cut them, just go straight down and back up. Don't twist it. Because when you twist it, you're sealing the edges of the dough and the biscuits won't rise. <clears throat> and that's the last thing we want is a biscuit that's not gonna rise. 
So we're just gonna cut the rest of these out. Now these, because they're gonna go on top of our pot pie, they're not gonna be, they're not gonna go onto a baking sheet or anything right now. They're just gonna sit right here on the counter till we are ready to um, finish our pot pie with our biscuits. This is my favorite recipe for um, buttermilk biscuits. I love this one. This is a Pioneer Woman recipe. She's one of my favorites. Let me use my knife to scrape up the rest of this dough. It's stuck to my board. Okay, we're gonna take the rest of our dough. We're just gonna lightly pack it together so that we can get another few biscuits out of this. We wanna have enough biscuits out of our dough so that our pot pie is gonna be covered in our Dutch oven. Biscuits are not supposed to be perfect. They are a very rustic food. They should be very homey looking, but they should have a good rise to them. Okay, let's get the rest of this off our cutting board. What I should have done is I should have made these on my wooden board, not on my plastic board, but it's totally gonna be fine. Put down just a tiny bit of flour into this dough so it's not sticking quite so bad. Okay, cut out a couple more of these biscuits. Then I'm gonna wash my hands up real good and then we are gonna get started on our pot pie. If you end up with the dough at the end and you don't have enough to cut a biscuit out, that can be your funky looking biscuit and you can just make it look like the rest of them. You can just form it into a biscuit shape, just like that. It still looks the same as the other ones, not as perfect, but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna just be another nice flaky biscuit. All right, I'm gonna wash up and we'll come back and do our chicken pot pie. We've got our biscuits all ready to go. Now we're gonna start on our chicken pot pie. I've got two chicken breasts here. These are some of the ones that we got from Costco that we vacuum sealed when we came back from the grocery store. This makes it so much easier for me. Um, we typically, if we're just eating a regular dinner, I only need one of these breasts because they are so huge. So I just cut the packages open and take out one breast and that's what I vacuum seal is just one breast per package. Just so it's the right amount for us, for what we're eating. So we're gonna take our chicken breasts, we're gonna dice these up. You want them diced up pretty small. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind when you're cooking. When you're cooking for people, make sure that what you're cooking is gonna be bite-sized, that they're gonna be able to eat it. Nobody wants to bite into a huge piece of chicken that they're gonna have to cut up, especially if it's um, you know something like it's in a pot pie. You don't wanna have to serve a knife and a fork with your pot pie. This is something that should be able to be eaten fairly easily. I'm just gonna trim up a little bit of this excess fat that's on here. You know, the chicken breasts are pretty lean, but they do sometimes tend to leave a little bit of fat on them and I just don't want the extra fat in my pot pie. So we're gonna cut that off. And then we are just gonna cut these up small into bite-sized pieces. We have in our Dutch oven over here, we've got four tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. That is going to, the olive oil is gonna keep the butter from burning and the butter is gonna add flavor to our pot pie. I can hear it sizzling. So we're gonna get this cut up real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in our pot. So we've got something in there that's already starting to cook. I love that sizzle. When you get that sizzle, you know something tasty is happening in your kitchen. We've got one more chicken breast here and this little piece of fat right there. We're going to go ahead and cut this one up into bite-sized pieces. We have four medium-sized potatoes. Once we get our chicken in our Dutch oven and the chicken's cooking, we will, um, we will start to cut up our potatoes. The other thing I'm super excited is we get to use some of our carrots 
onions and celery that we processed a couple of days ago. We put those in vacuum seal bags in the freezer, so that saved me a step today. Since I had a lot of other chopping that needed to be done, we had to make our biscuits, we had to cut up our chicken, cut up our potatoes. So this just takes that one extra step out. What I don't have to do is cut up the carrots and the celery and the onions. It's already done for me. That is something that is super, super nice if you take that just a few minutes when you bring home your onions and your celery and your carrots and even your bell peppers. We did some bell peppers too that day and they turned out amazing. Let me wash my hands real quick. When you're dealing with raw chicken, always make sure you wash your hands really well. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut up our potatoes. And I don't want these in big, huge pieces. Like I said, we're gonna be very mindful of our pot pie and who's gonna be eating it, making sure that our vegetable pieces are small enough. I'm gonna give this a stir real quick. Our potatoes. Pot pie really is not a very hard thing to make. It's super easy. You can even take a little bit of help from the grocery store if you want to. If you're not confident enough to make your own sauce for your pot pie, you can certainly use a can of cream of chicken soup or cream of mushroom soup if you're trying to keep it vegetarian. And then don't add the chicken. You can add some mushrooms and some other vegetables. I used to make vegetable pot pie for my girls at the sorority house, and I did I did the carrots and the celery and the onions and the peas, and I put broccoli and cauliflower in there and some mushrooms, and that always gave them, felt like they were having a really nice full pot pie. They weren't missing out on anything that the other girls were getting when they were having a pot pie with chicken. So it doesn't have to be made with chicken. You can make it with, you can even make it, this would be amazing with Thanksgiving coming up. This would even be great to do with leftover turkey. We have leftover turkey, which we always have leftover turkey for Thanksgiving. Take some of your leftover turkey, dice it up. You don't have to go through this full cooking process like I am with the chicken because your turkey's already cooked. So just make your sauce and then take your turkey that's been cooked, dice it up and add that to your sauce, add your veggies, and then it's gonna cook just like it would if you have the chicken in it. Got one more potato to cut here real quick, and then we're gonna move over and start watching our chicken. And get the rest of this done. Like I said, this is not a hard recipe. It's super, super easy, super quick. And I think this is gonna be a perfect dinner tonight. And a nice, cool fall evening. Watch our football game cheer on our ducks, and it's been a nice relaxing evening. My husband's been sick this week, so having a nice relaxing evening at home is going to be great. Let's bring you a little bit closer so you can see what we're doing over here. We've got our chicken. In our Dutch oven. I think we're going to add a little bit of, I love this Johnny garlic seasoning, it has great flavor. We're going to add a little bit of this in here. That looks good. Oh, that just made it smell even better in here. Just putting that little bit in there. So here is our carrots, celery, and onions that we processed a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna get those in here, start to get those cooking down with our chicken. Still just a tiny bit frozen, but that's the nice thing is it doesn't matter if they're still frozen a little bit in the middle. It's gonna be perfectly fine. It's gonna cook down. Let's turn our heat up a little bit since that was a little frozen. But this is gonna make this pot pie super, super tasty. 
And I love the convenience of having our carrots, celery, and onion already chopped up, ready to go, so that we didn't have to deal with it today and we were able to make this even faster. So our sauce is gonna be super easy once we get these things cooking. Our sauce is gonna be super simple. We're gonna add some flour to it. This is what we're gonna use for our thickening agent. We're gonna thicken our sauce and we're gonna finish it off with our chicken broth. We're gonna add some milk and a little bit of heavy cream to give it that richness that we need. We'll add in our potatoes. We'll put our biscuits on top of this and this is gonna go in the oven and it's gonna cook for probably about a half hour or so just until, cause everything in here will be already cooked. We're basically just uh, warming everything in there again and we're getting our biscuits done that are on top. So this is smelling super, super good. Grab our heavy cream so we're ready when we start to make our sauce. This is coming to a boil now which is what we want. This is smelling so, so good. You guys can see down in my Dutch oven, our chicken, our carrots, our celery, our onions. We're gonna turn that down just a little. We're gonna start adding in our flour. We're gonna put this in and this is what's gonna help us to thicken our sauce and make our roux. I had about two tablespoons of flour in here. I think it's gonna take all of it. And like I told you before, when you're making something with flour that you're putting in here to thicken a sauce, you want to make sure that you cook it for a couple of minutes after putting the flour in there because you want to get that raw flour taste out. Nobody wants to eat something with a raw flour taste in it. So we'll just cook this for another probably 30 seconds and then we'll be ready to add our broth that we made with our um, chicken bouillon which I love this stuff, it's super, super good. Okay, we're gonna add in our broth now. Let's make sure we get all of this broth that's in the middle, in the bottom of our measuring cup. We're gonna let this come back up to a boil. Now that we have that in, we're gonna go ahead and add our potatoes. So we have our four potatoes. The potatoes are going to help thicken the pot pie as well. This looks so good. I have a just a package of frozen mixed veggies. Um, this has, so it's going to have a little more carrot, but that's fine. It has corn, green beans, and peas. And even though I'm not a fan of peas, it'll still be fine. I will just pick them out and give them to my husband. It'll be fine. He's after 30 years, he's gotten used to eating the peas out of my stuff. So I think it's going to be fine. You know, I think I'm just going to add the rest of this. Having a, a real veg heavy pot pie is not going to hurt anything. Oh, this looks so good. This is going to be perfect for us tonight to watch our football game. Have a nice bowl of chicken pot pie with a nice fluffy biscuit on top. This just smells super, super good. Starting to thicken up a little bit. And then we're gonna add in, we'll add in just a little bit of milk and then we'll finish it with the heavy cream. Oh, this smells super good. Okay, we're gonna add in a little bit of milk. And I'm kind of deviating from the recipe a little bit because I want a little bit more richness in this. So I am gonna add a little bit of chive and onion cream cheese to our base. This is gonna give it a little bit 
more of a rich, richer flavor inside. It's going to give it a little creamier texture. We're just going to plop this right in here and it's just going to melt as this heats on the stove. Put in about a half a container. We'll just get that mixed in there. It's funny, I am not a, an onion fan, but I love chives. I love chives and I love green onions, which is super funny that I'm not an onion fan, but I'll eat those. So this is hot enough, it's already starting to melt our cream cheese is melting down into our pot pie. We're gonna finish off with just a little bit of heavy cream, probably about a quarter of a cup. Let's mix that in and see where we're at with our creaminess. Pot pie should be creamy. They should not be um, watery. They should be nice and creamy and thick. This is looking super good. All right, I think I'm gonna add just a splash more, maybe another tablespoon of heavy cream just to give it a little bit more. We're gonna let this cook. I want this to start to really thicken up on the stove before we add our biscuits. Our pot pie feel, filling is looking super, super good. Starting to thicken up just a little bit. I'm gonna let it thicken up the rest of the way in the oven when it cooks. Get this off our spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the heat on the stove. And we are gonna get our beautiful flaky biscuits put right on top. They are gonna kind of sink in, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. I might have too many biscuits, which is fine because I will just bake up a couple of these on a sheet pan and I'm sure my husband will be more than happy to eat them. But there is our biscuits in our pot pie. We're gonna put this in our oven at 350 for about a half an hour, I'm thinking. May take a little bit more, but we're gonna go ahead and get it in the oven Need to grab my pot holders. The pot is really hot. And that's just gonna hang out in the oven. And it'll be done about football time. Hey friends. So our chicken pot pie with biscuits is done and it's smelling amazing. It was in the oven for about 35 minutes and we got some really, really crispy biscuits on top. It looks amazing. You can see how that looks. I am so excited to eat that. Can't wait, but it is molten lava, so it's gonna have to cool for a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna start our football game. Go Ducks, we're gonna watch our football game. We're gonna have this in a little bit after it cools down. I wanna thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. It means so much to me that you guys would join me and you would support my channel. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you're new around here, please subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the content that I show. I have so many more amazing recipes to share with you guys coming up. Um, don't miss out on anything that I share. And have a great day, friends.